Hello, it's Tim from Fair Play now on the 15th of October 2024. So just getting back into some of my Telegram groups and a meme that jumped out immediately was uh, this one here. Um, now, I don't know who put these leaflets on these newspapers, whether it was the news agent themselves or more likely one of us lot going in there and just putting them on the newspapers. But uh, it says it all, doesn't it, really? You really shouldn't trust the mainstream newspapers because, after all, as the leaflet says, uh, they are just the opinions of a small handful of billionaires and you can't take it as gospel you can't take it as fact as to what is actually going on in the world which might seem obvious to the likes of me and you but it's surprising just how many people out there still think that uh, just because it's in the newspapers it must be true uh, just because it's on the telly it must be true and even just because a politician or the government is saying it, it must be true. And there's just so many people out there who think that still, which seems incredible because it's it's pretty obvious that uh, all of these things, yes, even politicians, I'm afraid, are owned by a very small group of billionaires who use their position and power and ownership of these things to uh, uh, you know, basically express their opinions and get things done how they want them to be done. And, um, and in no way, shape or form can you rely on it as a fact or truth. Uh, just so obvious to, to us, but it's, again, it's cognitive dissonance, isn't it? There's just so many people out there who still trust these things, incredible as that may seem. And uh, if things like this, little things like this can be uh, put out there and maybe get a few more people thinking, uh, maybe that is the way to go. Uh, it would be great if um, some rule or law came in uh, almost like a government health warning, like you get on packets of cigarettes, uh, that actually says, uh, you know, this newspaper uh, doesn't necessarily represent the truth. It's just opinion. It's just an, an opinion piece. Um, and also, talking of politicians, if I was Prime Minister, uh, very unlikely, I know, but uh, if I was, one thing I would push for was to say to these billionaires, yes, look, you know, you're entitled to buy a newspaper, but you are not entitled to um, affect uh, or influence the uh, editorial content. Your journalists and editors need to have free reign to uh, just express the truth and facts and uh, nothing else. And in fact, if you actually try and interfere with that, that will be a criminal offence. And I don't care how rich you are, uh, you are going to go to prison. But uh, hey, you know, that's if um, honest, uncorrupt, sort of decent people were in charge of uh, uh, governments. But uh, sadly, that's not the case. But anyway, uh, just a little bit of a... Uh, opinion there. I thought that was a really good leaflet and uh, let me know if you've seen similar leaflets in your news agents. So yeah, as you know, I've come back from this trip to the Far East and I said I'd give a few opinions and uh, uh, reflections on my travels and uh, I suppose the most obvious one would be, uh, you know, would any of these countries be a good place or good places for us in the freedom movement to go to you know if you're sort of totally fed up with the UK and you're sort of worried about how things are going here uh, would Thailand, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, Singapore uh, be good places to go to and uh, my answer to that would be uh, yes and no. <laughs> uh, sorry to be a bit vague there but uh, uh, yeah, I'd say yes, maybe not so much Singapore, but uh, uh, yes, 
well let's start with the no first of all shall we um all of these countries were complete basket cases during the lurgy uh, as you probably know and um I, i've said it before and i still think it so now that uh, the uk was literally the best place in the world to be during that period how hard as that might uh, seem uh, if you lived here but uh, there's just so many other countries which were so much more draconian and uh, just one little incident i saw in thailand just a few days ago uh, i was waiting at one of the stations for a train and uh, all the stations have got kind of police sort of on the platforms uh, making sure people behave and there was this one bloke and all he did is he there's no trains coming and all he did is he kind of um got fairly near to the edge of the platform and just looked down at the tracks for uh, whatever reason uh but almost immediately this uh policeman just really blew his sort of whistle really loud you know they got you know ear piercing whistles <laughs> gave it a good old blast and and then sort of wave this bloke away from the tracks like that and um and that's just for a tiny little thing so can you imagine what what it would have been like if uh you were a few years ago if you had been in one of those stations without a mask on uh you know i don't think he could have just got away with uh oh sorry mate i'm exempt or uh sorry mate i just don't believe in them and then off they go <laughs> i think uh, uh you'd have probably got a truncheon over your head sort of thing and um so and i think all of these other countries uh were the same um people just seem to be a lot more compliant to authority in these places than uh, we are here uh, and you know so many other parts of the world as well and it might have seemed that uh, there was a lot of people very compliant here in the UK as well and of course there was uh, which is part of the whole problem but there was enough people uh, who weren't compliant which made all of the difference and I don't think that was the case in these other places in these other parts of the world uh again some of these places they're just on an everyday basis they're very much into their rules and regulations as well uh, especially singapore uh you know there's sort of signs and notices everywhere saying um uh, oh you can't do this and you can't do that because it's illegal and that's illegal and um even on their kind of customs declaration form that you have to uh, do before going into the country uh in big black pole type it says uh yeah uh any drug trafficking carries the death penalty <laughs> uh so you know they really don't mess around in some of these places so f yeah with regard to that uh it's none of these places i don't think would, would be good for uh, freedom people but on the other hand uh the stretch of authority as i said before not quite so much singapore but in the other places uh the stretch of authority doesn't really extend that far beyond uh the major cities uh, once you get into the, the backwards because they're poor countries they just haven't got the uh, infrastructure and the uh, the amount of police necessary to uh, uh, patrol absolutely everywhere so you could possibly find a parcel of land which would be very cheap in these places find a parcel of land way out in the uh, back of beyond kind of thing and uh, form a little community a little bit like hope sussex maybe and you'd be uh, uh have very little chance of being affected by the authorities and the police uh, as i kind of intimated in a video i did while i was out uh, in uh, indonesia um they haven't even got the, the strength to stop people uh sort of yeah riding around and doing crazy things on motorbikes you know there's kids literally kind of seven eight year old kids riding around on motorbikes so they can't even stop that so if they can't stop that how are they going to stop sort of freedom people and of course if you got to that stage you got a parcel of land and a community built up you, you could then 
uh, sort of grow plentiful amounts of food. You, you'd never starve because it's just easy to grow stuff there because there's obviously loads of heat, loads of sunshine and uh, plenty of rain as well. So you can grow all of your uh, exotic fruits, uh, yeah, mangoes, bananas, dragon fruit, uh, even durian, if you know what, what that is. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have the uh, courage to try one of those. There's plenty of it on offer, but uh, I, um, I didn't quite build up the courage to try one of those. Maybe next time, uh, but uh, Google durian if you're curious about what that's all about. Uh, but it's... Um, yeah, really quite something, like so I hear. Uh, so, um, but to, yeah, you could just grow absolutely anything and you'd, you wouldn't starve out there and um, it would be a, perhaps a good place or places to start a community, uh, but uh, quite how you'd go about it, I wouldn't know. Uh, I'm just really giving some opinions here, some sort of, you know, off the top of my head, really. So that is why I say, you know, are these places I've been to, would they be good places for freedom people? And it's very much a yes and no scenario. And, um, and like I say, if you go back to Lurgy days, uh, none of those countries were particularly great. It's hard to know what countries were. Uh, and obviously, we weren't too badly off here in the UK. Uh, other places like Mexico, Sweden and Florida kind of jump out at me um, as being sort of uh, better, at least in some ways, to hear. Uh, but let's face it, nowhere was perfect, was uh, yeah, was it? And I think really, uh, although it might be a good idea or seem like a good idea to uh, jump ship and go to somewhere and lose yourself in the backwoods of Indonesia or something, uh, I think um, uh, you, you're really better off staying in a place that you know we, we kind of know what the score is here in the UK uh, we all know um, the system at least you know partially maybe not totally in depth but we know the system here a lot more than we do over there we know what we can get away with and we know the loopholes and we've, we're in touch with people who know the loopholes even more you know like uh, uh, all of these sort of um, common law experts and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, just a few insights. Just, I've rambled on a little bit here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, having been to some of these countries, uh, I, I really do think that during the nonsense, we really were in the best place possible. Um, whether that will continue to be the case or whether we'll get to the stage where finding sort of you know remote place in let's say indonesia uh an uninhabited or barely inhabited island because indonesia's got zillions of islands many of them sort of barely occupied uh whether you could just go there and um you know sort of get yourself a parcel of land there set up a community and just live out the rest of your days uh sort of living on pineapples and mangoes and bananas and uh, soaking up the sun uh, and being free uh, maybe that would be an option in the future but uh, uh, or maybe not let me know what you think anyway in the uh, comment section below on that uh, but uh, I think this video is uh, getting on there in time so I'm gonna leave it but uh, I will be back with plenty more thoughts on this sort of subject going forward so that's uh, Tim from Fairplay now thanks for watching